Let us discuss dysprolapsis and let me show you how the body handles majority of dysprolapsis. I am George Ampat. I'm a consultant orthopedic surgeon and I work in Liverpool, United Kingdom. If you need further information, please visit one of the following websites, ampat.co.uk, freefrompain.org.uk and easespine.com. Please note that the material in this video is for information only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. Always seek the advice of your doctor or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay seeking it because of something you have seen in this video. If you think you may have a medical emergency, call your doctor, go to the nearest hospital emergency department or call the emergency services immediately. If you choose to rely on any information provided in this video, you do so solely at your own risk. Let us spend some time looking at the anatomy of the spine. There are two images. The image on the left is the side view of the spine and image on the right is the top down view or the axial view of the spine. So let us now look at the image on the left. The vertebral column consists of blocks of bones placed one over the other. The individual bones are called the vertebra. In between the blocks of bones are soft cushions or the cartilaginous discs. The discs are also called intervertebral discs. The vertebrae and the discs are arranged alternatively. Nerves come out from the spinal cord and go to different parts of the body. There are 31 nerves on either side. And it, the nerve reaches every single body part. On the right is the top down view or the cross section. The cross section shown here is through the disc space. And on the upper end of the image, you have the disc. The disc has two parts, an inner jelly-like nucleus pulposus and an outer firmer annulus fibrosus. The in the vertebral column is a tunnel called the spinal canal. The spinal cord runs through this canal and the spinal nerve roots emerge on either side of the spinal cord and exit the vertebral column. The nerves from the back join together and form the sciatic nerve, which runs down the leg. And that is why sciatica is back pain and leg pain together. The structure of the disc is very similar to a jam donut. The nucleus pulposus is like the jam in the center of the donut <clears throat> and the annulus fibrosus is like the dough on the outside. Sometimes, for various reasons, the disc suffers failure and becomes dehydrated. Good discs have the ability to attract water and are well hydrated. A disc that has failed loses that ability and the water content in the disc becomes less. This then becomes dehydrated disc or is sometimes referred to as a degenerate disc. Degenerate may not be the right term because degenerate implies old and aged. This is not so and even young persons may have dehydrated discs. Please note that drinking water is not going to correct the situation. On rare occasions, the dehydrated disc fails even further and the nucleus pulposus may leak out of the annulus fibrosus. This is called a disc prolapse or a herniated disc. You can see how the disc is now pressing on the nerve and which can indirectly cause severe pain down the path on which the nerve is traveling to. The disc prolapse presses on the nerves that form the sciatic nerve and hence the patient experiences severe leg pain. 
This is because the sciatic nerve supplies the leg. Sometimes the back pain is very minimal or one may not have any back pain at all and the patient may only experience leg pain. The pain may force the upper body to tilt sideways or to bend forwards. Disc prolapses are very painful conditions. But the good news is that majority of the disc prolapses, nearly 95% will resolve without any intervention. Hence, surgery or injections are not required for most disc prolapses. You may need to take strong painkillers to control the pain for a few days or a few weeks or maybe even for a few months. Consult your doctor to find the best medication to take to control the pain. The good news is that the body has a mechanism to handle the disc prolapse. Let me explain how that happens. As soon as the prolapse takes place, there is inflammation around the nerve and the prolapse disc. The inflammation attracts macrophages to the area. The macrophages are the body's immune cells whose normal function is to kill and digest bacteria and viruses that attack us. Surprisingly, the same macrophages eat and digest the disc that has prolapsed outside the disc space. With time, the prolapse decreases in size and there is no more pressure on the nerves. Once the inflammation settles, the macrophages also move away from the area. The prolapse disc is like jam that has leaked out of a jam donut. The macrophages eating and digesting the prolapse disc material can be similar to friendly ants eating away the jam that has leaked out of the donut. The inflammation attracts the macrophages. The jam that has leaked out attracts the ants. The macrophages are necessary to help remove the prolapse disc material. Once the prolapse resolves, the macrophages move away. Unfortunately, strong anti-inflammatories or steroid injections can decrease the inflammation and halt natural mechanisms that are available for the body to handle a disc prolapse. It is best to discuss with your doctor the best medicines to take. Even if you are considering an injection, discuss the side effects of the injection with the doctor who is doing the injection. As the prolapse decreases, slowly the leg pain improves. The pain is gone initially from the foot, then the lower leg, the knee, the thigh and the hip. Maybe the only pain that remains is the back pain. This is called centralization of pain or the pain coming to the center. It also improves the posture. The bent posture is gone and you may be able to stand erect. Majority of disc prolapses resolve with no intervention. However, some prolapses are large and cause Cordaquina syndrome. This is an urgent condition and requires immediate medical treatment. In this condition, the patient may not be able to pass water and there is numbness in the saddle area or around the front and the back passage. If you have numbness in around your external genitalia, you are not able to feel when you wipe your backside, then you need to seek urgent medical advice. Sometimes you may become incontinent, but that is a late stage. You need to try to identify when you have difficulty passing water rather than waiting for incontinence. This is the MRI scan of a young person who had severe back pain and leg pain. This person had a disc prolapse. The disc prolapse was at the L5-S1 level. The images on the left and the images on the right are the same. It is the same image on the right, but I have marked the right images with some color indexing to identify the different parts. The top two images are the sagittal or the side view and the bottom two images are the axial or the top-down view. 
On the top images, you can see that the prolapse is occurring from the lowest disc, which is the L5S1 disc, and it is a large prolapse which is completely blocking the spinal canal. I have drawn the nerve in blue and it shows how that nerve is getting crushed. Now if we consider the bottom two images, it is the axial and you can again see how the disc is large and is nearly completely uh, obliterating the spinal canal and the nerve on the left is compressed. This is the same patient MRI scan now done nine months after the initial onset. On the previous scan, you saw the large disc prolapse, but here you can see how the disc has naturally been absorbed. On the previous scan, there was a large red dot or a big black dot which had completely obliterated the canal, but now that big obliteration has been uh, eliminated or it has resolved and there is free passage and there is no pressure on the nerves. This is again similar or the same images as seen previously, but instead of coloring it, I have put when at the start and at the end. So on the left is at the start when the patient initially noticed severe back pain and left sided leg pain. And on the right is the images that were done about nine months later and shows that the disc prolapse has nearly resolved. This is exactly results in the exact mechanism as was explained earlier. This is not a rarity, but it's a very common occurrence. Majority of the people with disc prolapses improve with time. They improve even if nothing is done, but they have excruciating pain and that needs to be controlled with painkillers and it is important to build up the muscles. So gentle core exercises to improve the strength of the muscles around the spine is vital. It should be noted that if you have had a disc prolapse, you are likely to experience some back pain in the future. An operation will not prevent that future back pain. An injection will also not prevent future back pain. It is possible that if you have not had any operation, you are likely to be have less back pain than the other situations. Obviously, if the pain is very severe, or if there is cord equina syndrome, or if there is a significant neurological deficit, your toes are not working, your legs are not working, then you may need surgical intervention. It is important you talk to your doctor and the treating spinal team. Now, for back pain, the best solution is to build up the core muscles on your spine. The muscles that surround the spine are the soldiers that protect the spine and they need to be kept healthy. So continue and view our videos which give you details on core stability. Thank you for viewing this video. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel and do like this video if you liked it. If you require any further information, please do not hesitate to look at our websites freefrompain.org.uk, ampad.co.uk and freeeasthespine.com. Uh, Thank you very much.